Hello and welcome to Triscoll Hearts Golden Compass podcast. I'm your host and producer of the show, Orla Queen. And today I am delighted to welcome another amazing speaker that we get to meet um, together, <laughs> Ona Christy Martin. And Ona is, is uh, joining me all the way from the States. So welcome, Ona. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me on. Mm, you're so welcome. So um, for those that don't know Ona, uh, she is a clairvoyant artist, writer and shamanic guide who uses a unique soul visioning process to help people find their spiritual genius zone. So I look forward to going to those kind of two concepts with you. As a mentor, Ona has been described as a spiritual jumper cable cables <laughs> functioning like a combination of magic mirror to the soul and inner what wilderness guide she helps her clients connect more deeply with their spiritual guides clarify their own inner vision and develop a strong inner gps so they can get on the fast track to living their purpose love how you describe that many report that the work results in a in a deep sense of inner peace connection and abundance in their life and work Ona also connects with your higher self and spirit guides to create beautiful personalized artworks that remind you every day of the divine essence of your being. The paintings carry a very high frequency vibration that helps to activate sacred healing energy within you. She is especially known for her connection with spirit animals and is the creator of the Spirit Animal Awareness Oracle card deck, which you can get on YouTube and I'll be sharing the link to that in the description. So today, Ona is going to be talking about finding your genius zone with the help of your spirit animal allies. So Ona, tell me, how did you get started in this work? Where did this journey start for you? That's a really, really good question. I think for for most of us, like all of us, you know, it, it starts in childhood. I think we, each of us has our own I know what I call spiritual superpowers, which is, um, you know, just the things that come naturally to us. And uh, for me, it really manifested um, very early on through the artwork. I was always from the time I could hold a crayon, <laughs> was always, always drawing. I can also remember singing as a very, very young child. Um, and interestingly enough, I stopped at about age three and I'm, I'm pretty sure it was like stuff happening in my life. It happens to a lot of us light workers, star seeds, um, we kind of get shut down at some point and either it's you know very early or we make this conscious conscious decision sometimes that it's it scares us our gifts right um and and we get shut down so the singing is starting to come back <laughs> um but but the artwork was something that i was constantly with me and when i was in college i began to realize that um, you know, I do these paintings and they would be symbolic, right? But I didn't know what they meant, you know, and I it started to realize, I'd, I'd look back after a year or two years and realize, oh, well, I could see the meaning in it and I could see the symbolism and, and how it related to my life. And uh, so about five years ago, um, I kind of started the, I, I, I hate to say it, that was like the start of my awakening because I think it was sort of you know throughout the life but but the major kind of awakening and early on in that process I had this just download um, to hold my dad in my head and get some paper and see what wanted to come out so I did that I was just thinking of him and started to draw without even thinking about what I was doing and this bear goddess came out it was this beautiful goddess with a bear and I looked at it and I could see all the symbolism and how it related to him and what it was about and I was like wow that's really cool <laughs> so I tried it with a few other people and each time it was like the image would come out and I could see what it meant for them it was like oh that's really cool <laughs> so um Shortly after that, I have a, a friend who um, we're we're both writers and, and we had met in that way. But she, I, my writing career had taken off and hers really hadn't. And she she called me one day. She's like, I found out I'm really not a writer. I'm <laughs> I'm an energy worker. I'm like, 
oh, well, what's that? <laughs> and the funny thing was that I had already been certified like in Reiki, right? in Reiki 3, but it was just like, I didn't put the two and two together. I was like, what the heck is this energy stuff? So she's like, oh, I'll show you. So she did this energy scan technique on me. And I think that was what actually, because it was shortly after that, that I had the, the, the art thing with my dad. Um, so that, that really kind of helped to trigger this whole thing. But then she invited me down to this workshop in Chicago with her mentor. And I, I was like, she's like, you got to come. And I'm like, okay. Um, and I was like, I, I agreed. But then I, at the last minute, I almost didn't go because I was, I was thinking, you know what? It's a long way down there. It was about seven hours away. And there's going to be a pitch, right? So they're going to they're gonna be selling something. I just don't want to go. But then at the last, very last minute, I was like, well, you know, what the heck? I'll go anyway. I want to spend some time with Lisa. It'll be fun. I don't have to buy anything. So I went down there all, the whole way down. I was thinking, well, you know, I'm not going to buy. <laughs> I'm not going to buy. <laughs> okay. So I get down there and walk into this room and there's this whole room of people who, and I've always felt like kind of an outsider, right? Throughout my whole childhood, we moved a lot and I never felt like I was kind of, you know, in. Walk in there and the whole room everybody in there was so welcoming and it was like they got me like for the first time in my life I was within this room with a whole crowd of people who understood kind of who I was right mm -hmm. and even though I didn't know I was like an energy worker <laughs> um and so I was like when they, they did make a pitch and I was like the person at the table <laughs> <laughs> to sign up so that's where I, I learned the energy scan technique uh, uh, which I'm incorporating into you know what I do um, so so that's kind of a I guess short version of <laughs> how I got here because I think yeah I yeah well we'll, we'll, we'll go deeper into it you know we'll go deeper yeah. into it but that's a that's a fascinating um, journey especially I love the description of your the exercise you did with your dad and what emerged from that to right. show your gift. Um, but tell me about the soul. So the soul visioning work. So where did you go? You know, the, like that, that stepping from just energy healer, energy work right. to the soul visioning process. Cause that's a whole other, you know, that's a whole other level. Mm. Yeah. For me, it was a real struggle. And I know again, this is also fairly common um, with very creative people because uh, creative people tend to be very interested in and often are good at different things. And so it's, it can be a challenge to figure out, well, what's my actual soul path? You know, where, where's, which, what can I do to incorporate all these? Right. Um, so it, it was a kind of a long process of figuring out what my actual process is because I always felt like the art was so important and it's, it's our society teaches us to put things in boxes, right? You know, mm -hmm. you're an artist or you're an energy worker or you're a writer or you're whatever it is. And so I really had internalized that and had, was really kind of struggling. It's like, cause every time I'd go and start, um, really stepping out as an energy worker it just something in me was like well yes but not all of it. I mean it's not all um and then I'd sort of pull back and then I'd start stepping out as an artist but it's like yes but <laughs> it's mm -hmm. not all of it so it, it 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 was a process of learning to first of all accept all of that and to love myself enough to allow myself to you know to, to push boundaries and then to figure out, well, how does this all interact and how does it all come together and how do I incorporate all this stuff in, um, you know, when I'm working with others and so forth. So, oh, excuse me. <laughs> um, so it, it, what it works out, what it has kind of evolved into is um, I use it, it I, I think the term visioning is what I sort of settled into because when I work in, with the energy work, um, I don't, like some people are very, like use their hands a lot to move energy. Um, I'm more of a mind and vision. So um, I, I take people in a process, like I can sort of see into them. I'll see, I'm, I'm very clairvoyant. So I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do this process where I look into each of their chakras and kind of see what comes up. Often I'll get the, the clairaudient stuff and, um, you know, just 
whatever, however way, ways it comes up and I'll describe it to them. And there becomes sort of like this picture that comes up as well as if they want, I can kind of look into, uh, so sometimes people are like, well, um, can you tell me what my spirit animal is? And I, I usually tell them, I'm not gonna tell you what your primary totem is because I think that's a very personal relationship. And sometimes it takes a little time to work with the spirit animal on your own. I really encourage people to, to do that work um, you know, and, and have that own personal thing. But I can look into them and ask for a spirit animal to come forward and see what wants, which one wants to come forward. And sometimes it is their personal totem. Other times it's one that simply has a message for them right at the moment or for a certain phase of their life. Um, but I can't do that work. And another one of the things that I do is uh, I can ask for an angel to come forward and I'll, I'll paint it. So that is all incorporated depending on like what the person chooses, what, 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 you know, what I've got different packages that I use, um, you know, so whether they want to come to me for the art or if they, they're looking for more the, the, the life path kind of thing, but I will bundle the artwork in there because I think it is very powerful. Our, our minds often will kind of trip us off. So the archetypes, the symbols that come through, those are a way to bypass that monkey brain, that thinking mind, and it will, because it, it bypasses the whole language part of us, um, it is really a, a fairly pure channel into, you know, what the divine wants to tell us. It's just that it needs to be interpreted. <laughs> so, so that's kind of part of what I do is helping people to access that part. And since for a lot of us aren't real clairvoyant, um, I, I can help kind of be that guide to, to help that come forward and help work through it. And I also do sort of a, a journeying process, which is like a, it's like a guided meditation, but very interactive with people. Um, so we'll go into that dream world. And um, I find that not every client is able to follow that, um, but most are, and we can kind of go into that dream world, allow this, the archetypes, the guides, and so forth to come forward and then work with them. And I really consider myself more as a guide and not as a, a healer. I think everybody um, is, is their own healer. Right. So I don't feel like I heal people, <laughs> but I do help guide them and, and, and assist them in a, a self-healing process. Mm, beautifully described. And um, and I, I want to excite listeners by sharing that Ona is going to be giving a free gift later on in the show. Um, that she's going to be offering just um she'll speak to it but it's a it's about experiencing some of her work and i'm like i i'm super interested ona <laughs> i'm i'm like i'm in <laughs> so um so thank you for describing so beautifully yeah this you know what you do around this visioning this soul visioning process and you speak then about the genius zone like finding your genius zone mm -hmm. so maybe if you yeah. can talk to that a little bit more as well like what specifically is that and how do you find it like how does your yeah. process help to find it mm -hmm. sure um well to preface that i really use nature as a pattern for everything um i i think you know we're all in this creative process and we, we are creators, we're creating our own reality, we're creating our own selves, um, but nature has this template, right? It's, it's, it's the grand creation <laughs> that everything unfolds through, and we are, of course, a part of that, um, but there's this ego, ego part of us, of course, that, that can miscreate, and so I find nature to be like this this pattern that I want to look at for for everything because that that's it, it shows us the healthy ways to be right it shows us how mm -hmm. to thrive um, and so looking at nature I noticed that each creature has its own what I call superpowers its own characteristics 
um, whether it's physical characteristics or behavioral that help it to survive and to thrive in, it, in its natural environment. And I, I believe that each one of us has that as well. Um, for instance, one of the clients I've been working with, one of his superpowers is that he, he sees truth, right? And, and sometimes the superpowers, it's like, it's like, because when I first met him, it, 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 he was going through this, this um, where he would be caught up in other people's illusions. And as we've been working together, it's like he's been more and more really being able to see through that and really becoming discerning and so forth. And he's got this kind of laser focus where he is a truth seeker. And, and that to me is one of his superpowers is that he just is like this bulldog for the truth, <laughs> um, it, which, which is really, really powerful. And um, mm. let's see another one that I'm working with. Um, she's able to, kind of delve into some of the really dark, dark, dark stuff that's, that's, you know, underlying the underbelly of society, right? And what she's, you know, what we're realizing that she's able to do is to bring that up to the light and to start to transmute that. So each of us has, you know, our different ways. Some people move energy really well through their hands. Like um, my, my partner, he's just naturally just, uh, he can just pull, you know, funky energy right out of a person. Um, so, but, but sometimes it's like, we're not really aware of those or, or we sort of like, we're not consciously aware of it or um, sometimes it's like, cause illusion likes to come forward. The, the trickster in all of us likes to hide that from us or to um, put barriers in the way. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Or to bring us to this point where, um, you know, this false humility, right? <laughs> Where, oh, it's not, it's nothing, or, you know, it's this devaluing of the self. Um, so part of the finding of the superpowers is to really, first of all, um, identify them, you know, because as I'm working with somebody and something comes forward like that, I'll be like, that's one of your superpowers, right? And they'll be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and then, but sometimes <laughs> it's like there's work around, you know, to value oneself enough, right. To, to recognize that there is value to that, to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Like, like for myself, it was the art, right. Or, or you know, part of it was the art because there's this whole societal thing about the starving artist and, and there is sort of a devaluing of, of the creative process, right? Where it has to be making money, it's gotta be, <laughs> you know, economically viable or whatever it is, right? Um, sometimes a superpower is simply, presence is simply the ability to just walk into a room and just change the, the vibration in the room. And you don't have to, like, can you make a career out of that? It, it doesn't even matter what your career is, right? If that's your superpower. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it mm -hmm. doesn't, like, because people are always looking at, well, what can I do? What can I do? Well, sometimes it's really more about being. So mm -hmm. recognizing some of those, you know, gifts that aren't necessarily something that society recognizes, right? But as recognizing that as valuable as well. Mm. Well, beautifully described. And it's interesting that you use the term superpower almost more than the genius zone. And I love that, you know, that we all have these superpowers that aren't necessarily, yeah, they're not necessarily what you can build a career out of, but career out of, but they're because of their subtle nature. Um, but they're so much more powerful than that because they, you know, it's that it's, it's, it's a it's a deep truth that comes through and it and then that results in a deep knowing of the self right, right. um yes. and you know and it's interesting when you talk about the the truth i mean for me this golden compass is all about you know the new emerging truths yes. and so some of us have 
a couple of these superpowers, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and when you it. mentioned yeah. some of them, I can identify a few that I have, you know, definitely uh -huh. a truth yeah. seeker, but I can see another mission that I'm, you know, that I'm, you know, also that um, person who works at a multi a multi dimensional level um, yeah. where I'm where I'm some kind of a justice seeker that I haven't, yeah. <laughs> that maybe, yeah. maybe tuning in with you will help me discern a little bit more clear what that superpower is. But, That's right, um, and the archetypes but this, will show it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead. Well, interestingly, uh, the archetypes, um, yeah, let's let's jump to the, the spirit animal archetypes because mm -hmm. that's something that you're going to be maybe yeah that's something that we've kind of identified as kind of what we want to talk about today yeah. and also yeah. maybe that you want to give your offering around right so right. maybe right. maybe just like talk about that like in terms of how you know how that can help like that that ally the spirit animal ally or the mm -hmm. the archetype mm -hmm. right right because the spirit animals like there's many many archetypes of course like you know the queen or um you know any of the angels um and and when i work with people sometimes those will come up too plant totems often come up um the the, the animals as well but I, like i find the animals really interesting to work with because we can relate to them right you know we are mm -hmm. animals ourselves and so when an animal comes forward for us it's it's very relatable in a way that um that you, I can't really find in any other way. Like we can relate to a plant, but we relate to an animal in a little bit different way, right? We can really feel mm -hmm. ourselves as the animal. And um, so when an animal shows up for you, we can look at, you know, all those superpowers of the animal and see what that is saying to us or the behaviors of the animal. Um, and it can come up in, a number of ways. I mean, it, it can come up as um, an animal that we really, really identify with. And then, then we're looking at the strengths and weaknesses of the animal. And that will is going to reflect some of your own, you know, your own journey, your own um, challenges. And, and it can give us clues as to how, how to overcome those challenges, as well as it can sort of like give us a heads up that this might be an area that might be challenging for us. And sometimes we have to draw on maybe a different animal in order to assist or balance out those energies. Um, for instance, my primary totem is a horse and uh, tends to be very kind of forward moving and um, it's got a lot of forward momentum kind of energy. If you think of Aries, um, I, I've got a lot of Aries kind of deep down in my chart. <laughs> and so uh, the, the shadow side of that is like, it can be very impulsive and jumping into things without thinking and, and that kind of thing. That's been something I've been working on a lot. Um, so if you think of horse and, and bringing that animal into its, um, into its genius zone, right? As an animal that can really carry mm -hmm. us forward and has a lot of power um it it requires a lot of balance if you think of a, a an equestrian um it has to really have that seat and have the balance and have the calm right so these are all things that i've had to work on myself a lot that's been the kind of the primary <laughs> journey <laughs> for me and uh, the, the horse really has helped me to kind of understand myself be more compassionate with myself through the whole process um, and, and continuing process of living here on earth um, so just as an example. Mm. Yeah, well, thank you for that. And I, I think, yeah, giving giving such examples really help people understand how they can, can be aids, how, how they can be allies. Um, and I'm interested then just to make that link um, between, you know, this, the visioning, the soul visioning and these archetypes, allies, how do they, yeah, I suppose it's like, it's making that bridge, like how do these, how do these um, different archetypes help us to access our full purpose, right? The, yeah. the visioning process that and you talk it happens, about. It happens a lot of different ways. Like what I just described about the, um, my own personal totem, a lot of that is just like the mental work, right? And so some of it is like helping the, the mental side of us understand what's going on so that we can 
change the way we respond or react to things, right? Uh, so it's training the, the mind. Um, so that's one aspect of it, but they can actually come forward and um, really work with us energetically. I've been having that happen lately with the bees. Um, they have been connecting with bees and actually um, I was invited last year to attend this workshop with bees, this kind of shamanic workshop. Um, and about, a week or so after I decided, I just like, I knew right away, okay, I want to do that. And I had this just in vision, um, this bee, bee angel came through in my journal. Um, and then I happened to like, there were all these synchronicities at this workshop. It was <laughs> crazy, but I ended up connecting with one of the workshop leaders. And um, because what, as soon as I got there, uh, the thought came into my head, I would really love to do an Oracle deck around bees. And then the next thought that came in was like, oh, but I, I don't, I've never worked with bees. I don't know enough about them to really do that. And it turned out the workshop leader, I got to chatting with her. She knew I had done this Oracle deck and she's like, well, I have this Oracle deck on bees all written up, but I'm looking for an artist. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and the funny thing is, it's like, you know, people approach me quite frequently about doing decks and so forth projects. And it's like, well, if I'm working on, your project, I'm not working on my project, right? Mm -hmm. But this time it was like, yes, I, I, this really resonates. So yeah, we're working on this thing. And, um, but the bees since then, it was almost like, <laughs> like they have been coming in and working with me energetically in just amazing ways. They've been coming in a lot with client work and, and just, I don't know how to describe it, but, but like I said, I go into this sort of, meditation journey kind of state when I'm working with clients and so things will come in sometimes you know the spirit animals or whatever the bees have been frequently coming in as a protector um, I remember one time I was in meditation and, and working through this issue and the bees just came in and just covered my chakras and mm -hmm. this is what they do um, when the queen the, when the old queen is ready when when it's like the, the hive has gotten too big and, and, and it's the swarming process um she'll lay queen eggs and, and for the young queen's queen to take over and she'll leave the hive and she takes the majority of the bees with her and so in the process where she has to leave the hive and she's very vulnerable of course um and they all just surround her in this big ball of bees that's what they were doing because I was really like, I was literally moving. I was moving, um, kind of uh, starting this process of transferring out of my, my other business as, a, as an, uh, a writing agency. And I'm sort of in this process of transferring that. I was handing some of that stuff over to my daughter. So literally, you know, handing it over to the other, the, the younger queen. And so they were coming in and energetically just protecting and I was in this very vulnerable state because I had this health thing going on and I was moving at the same time and they were just like and it felt amazing and they've been like there have been several things that they've been doing with me energetically and uh, so a power animal or a spirit animal can really um, have they definitely have lives of their own and they can come in in amazing amazing ways for us um, in, that I, I could never make this up, right? <laughs> um, you know, they, it's just like they, they continually surprise me. Wow. Wow. This is incredible hearing it. And already, you know, I feel that protection just from, from listening to you and bringing in the essence of the bee. So yeah, and then, then we can call that in too, mm -hmm. right? You know, once they've, once we've developed a relationship with them, we, we can ask them for help or, or you know, call in that energy. Yeah. Mm. Well, beautiful. Um, I, I'm excited for you just to talk about your offering because I think it's such a gift um, for, for our listeners. So if you want to go ahead with that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, well, the first thing that I will do with every client, whether it's an art client, because um, 
if they, if somebody comes to me for like and say an angel painting or something, I, I need to kind of tune into them. Um, or if it's an energy client, the first thing that I do is what I what's called an energy scan. So like I mentioned before, we I look through all the chakras and see what comes up. It's a diagnostic procedure really, but it, it can also be very healing um, because it brings to light things. Okay, so a lot of the soul visioning work revolves around being becoming clear about things, becoming aware of them. It's awareness. Um, and so typically an energy scan session um, is a full hour, but I, what I'm going to like to offer is a mini one. I, I don't, I almost never offer free one-on-one -on -one work anymore because I found that <laughs> I, I used to do that and it would draw a lot of people that just wanted something for nothing. But I think in these times, this time right now with the whole worldwide, <laughs> um, I, I would like to offer like a mini scan, um, you know, 20 to 30 minutes and we'll just kind of look at sort of the, some of the major energy coming forward and, you know, to, to help to, I, I can't say exactly how it'll work out. It's a lot of it's just the clarity to be clear on what's going on. And then sometimes the healing work comes in with that. Um, what I would li like to ask in return is because I think there always has to be an energy exchange. It's really, really important. Um, without an exchange, you get this, um, like I said, wanting something for nothing. That's the victim mentality. And that's what we're moving out of right now. Um, so in exchange, I would just ask that you pay it forward, you know, find somebody, either somebody in need or somebody you don't know and give something of yourself to them and just pass it on. Mm. And, yeah. Um, mm. Such important, like a beautiful gift and, um, and also a, a really important kind of teaching there around passing on and, you know, not just being a receiver. Because of course, yeah, that's that. It's not a, it's not good energetically. So, oh, so Ona, how do people so, then? Yeah, how do people follow up with you around that? How do yeah, people? Yeah. Okay. Um. So my, I'm thinking probably I should set up a landing page that they can just sign up for that. Um, so I'll set it up on my web website is artofawakening.life and pay attention to the dot life because usually you think dot com. So artofawakening.life and then I'll put um, slash scan, S-C-A-N. And um, I will allow that probably through the end of April, um, just for people that hear about it through this interview. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, that's, uh, again, like I say, it's such a generous gift. I, I'm going to sign up. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's such a fascinating process. And as you said, it's, um, you know, these guides, these allies are there to help but support us. And we are going through really challenging times right now um, with this global pandemic. And I think now more than ever, people can look to these allies, can, can look to these archetypes for support uh, because it is a real soul searching time. So, you know, so really, you know, take this offer um, and as Una said, pass it on, you know, we, you know, we're, we're in this time of, we really do have to be generous and give back to society um, and in, in a time of crisis. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's also, it's this call to purpose, right? Because mm -hmm. the world is really shifting right now. And what I'm seeing happening, there's been a few of us who have been sort of like ahead of the crowd, right? Who've been through this awakening process. And now it's hitting the collective, it's hitting the planet, right? And so mm -hmm. for many of us who've kind of been through this, it's been a, a process of purging, a process of, um, of, of a lot of trials and things, you know, and we've had mm -hmm. to come through that and test to pass and so forth. Um, this is just sort of like this, this, this COVID-19 pandemic. This, I'm feeling like it's maybe the first of quite a few interesting shakeups. Um, and, and there's going to be a great need for people to really you know, those people who have kind of <laughs> come to a place where they, they feel strong enough to step forward in whatever way as healers or as bringing healing work into whatever they're doing, 
but finding that purpose and being clear about it so that they can really step into that genius zone and utilize their superpowers to really assist in this whole process, assist in the collective's healing, right? Um, there's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot more people now starting to need this kind of work. They're, they're, they're needing, you know, those around them that can help to tell them what's happening, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. to, to help them to stay centered and balanced and, and to get through this. Um, so, so, so a lot of this work is just about, you know, getting clear and getting, you know, balance so that you can go out and, you know, uh, like I said, pay it forward through what you do. Um, mm -hmm. So, so yeah, the call to purpose. Yeah. Perfect. I think that's, that's actually a great ending that that rally call for all of us to sort of go deeper in inwards just to see what the, you know, what the purpose, what our soul purpose really is at this time that we, you know, um, this time of awakening, let's call it, um, rather than this time of crisis. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, no, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this and I've taken so much from it. I'm sure, I'm sure our listeners have as well. And, um, and for sure, um, I appeal to you to, to get in touch with Ona and, and go through this process with her. And, you know, like she said, pass it on. Um, Thank you so much for tuning in to the Triscoll Hearts Golden Compass podcast. Go on to the SoundCloud link and see all the other podcasts that are there. Um, and I look forward to tuning in to you next next time. We I publish these podcasts every full moon. So, um, so that's when you will expect to see them go live. All right. Well, thank you all for tuning in. And thanks again, Ono. Blessings. Thank you Bye. so much, Orla. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, bye. Bye-bye.